Welcome, welcome, everybody. This is Andrew David. This is the High Performance Call, Blake Newbar's team, Monday through Friday, noon Eastern time. So the question for you today, are you taking care of yourself? Are your priorities in line? Or are you just feeling guilty every freaking time you try and do something for yourself? When the time comes to invest in you, time, energy, money, whatever it is, how many of you feel guilty for it? How many of you feel like this isn't something you should be doing, you should be trying to figure something else out. Uh, this was something I have seen good grief. I can't tell you how often when I talk with people as I'm coaching, that's something that's just so common. You know, I would, but you know, I've got to do this for the family. Well, I, you know, I'm spending time doing this and I just feel like I should be doing something else. I've, I've got this going on. I've got that going on. And we struggle. You know, when I was getting ready to do it, I was working you know, I've talked about this before, but I'd gone through the divorce. I was working three full-time jobs. I had started a fourth, you know, or two full-time, two part-time jobs, um, doing everything I could. Wasn't spending any money on anything because I didn't have any extra money to spend. And then when it looked, you know, when it was time to start this other business, you know, what I was told was go back to school, get a better degree. Well, I couldn't do that because that meant I, I was going to have to work less and I couldn't work less because I wasn't making enough as is. So that was off the table. We'll go get another job. Well, at the time, you know, trying to fit in an extra job when you're working anywhere between 12 to 20 hours a day didn't really make a whole lot of sense, right? Um, I had been building up cleaning and restoration. I've been doing that for a while, but there wasn't anybody that right at that time was hiring for a position that was going to pay me any more than all of these other things. And, and the only ones that were involved moving pretty far away. And I didn't want to do that. And so I started looking online and it was going to involve time and effort and money that I, just, you know, I felt like should go elsewhere. Right. And so that priority list that Juliana is talking about, I don't feel guilty. Uh, it's just that it's low on the priority list. Well, let's talk about that. Because a lot of you guys have a priority list and there's going to be some variations, but it looks something like this. Starts with work, family, chores, and then other, anything else. And self-care kind of gets grouped in with other, right? Now, some of you are going to say, no, well, spirituality is going to be there. Yes, well, other is there. Well, no, but I don't, you know, work isn't my priority. Family is my priority. Right. But time involved and engaged and mental effort, where is that? Right. Well, it's work, family, chores, other. So we end up placing ourselves closer to the end. Now, there are some reasons that we end up feeling guilty, especially with a lot of you guys that I've worked with. Um, yeah, women especially suffer from it. Rick's talking about too many distractions, competition, low energy. Women often suffer from it, you know, and, and we can argue about stereotypes, whatever, but that's just the reality, right? I mean, show of hands, we've got probably 50-50 men and women on this. Are there, any, are there any women that don't feel guilty occasionally about or selfish if you're trying to involve yourself with any kind of self-care? You don't feel guilty at all? Good. All right. Well, we got a, a couple of people on here. Odds are at some point, or if you're looking at doing that, um, not anymore. Well, good. So then what did you do to change? We're going to talk about some of those elements. Um, so let's kind of break down where that comes from. Now, part of the reasons that people start to feel guilty when they look at things, there's the definition of self-care. One of the common definitions that I get back, or when people start to talk about self-care do you ever use the words like indulge, right? Well, I'm going to indulge a little bit. Well, it's, you know, it's an indulgence. It's a guilty pleasure. It's something that I just, I feel like I have to do once in a while. We talk about it in a way that doesn't show any kind of empowering, right? Or we look at it as number two, it's a zero sum game. Well, if I'm going to do this zero sum game, it should be zero sum, sum gain, right? I think that's correct. Anyway, if I if I do this here, if I take time, effort, money to do this here, then I can't do that. Then something else is going to miss out. If I spend money on this, then my kids aren't going to have that. If I spend time doing this, then my friends, I'm not going to have time with that relationship, right? Or we look at success. We define it as simply the achievement. We don't look at it as the, the process involved. We only look at the end result. 
And when we're looking at it as simply the end result, then what you think is, well, I, I'd be better off doing something else. My time would be better spent doing X, right? Or you feel obligated to say yes to other people, to everyone except yourself, and then your time isn't your own kind of goes right along with that. Being retired and a widow living alone helps me not feeling guilty. Well, absolutely, uh, Sue. And, and that's good, though. There's a good chance that you still look at things and go, oh, I should be doing. But good. I hope you guys all um, are taking care of yourself. Now, real quick here, GB saying, I love to spoil myself, not waiting for someone else to do it. The only thing I would say there, the only small change I would make is understand that taking care of yourself isn't spoiling yourself. It's simply doing what you need to, to be a better version of yourself. I indulge in buying vinyl, my out for stress. There you go. The DJ chiming in. All right. Here's something important when we're looking at, at guilt and, and self-care, something to remember. Self-care is a product. It's about self-respect. You have to give yourself the respect you deserve. The higher that you value yourself, the more willingness you have to invest in yourself. And that's what you need to start to look at self-care as an investment in yourself, an investment in your health, an investment in your knowledge, an investment in your wealth, an investment in, in your life. That's ultimately what self-care is. So a couple of steps to guilt-free self-care. Then we're going to look at some things that you guys can do right now to invest in yourself. So first thing is you've got to define self-care really what it is right? What it is, what it isn't. So it's not simply an indulgence. It's not, um, you know, being greedy. It's not just taking care of you. It's looking at it as part of the pathway to become the best version of yourself, right? Next is knowing how to start to prioritize it. A good support system is helpful, but putting things in, you know, when you start to prioritize self-care and self-investment, Think about it. We've always talked about how much easier it is to fill someone else's cupboard when yours is full, how much easier it is to you know, help someone else feel well when your cup of gratitude overflows, right? And then having those around you that are willing to do the same thing. So let's, uh, let's start looking at a couple of things we can do to invest in ourselves. Number one, the biggest investment you can do is invest in yourself, in your, um, in your skills, Okay, so in advancing the education, utilize available training that you have here. Um, utilize it, training that's online, TED Talks, books, all of these things. Expanding your knowledge and keeping current. Now, along with this, it, developing your skills, understanding that it's not simply learning. You've got to take it and push it into action. The stuff that we go over here, guys, if you're not acting on it, at least once in a while, if you're not trying to take at least one thing from every call and put it into play, put it into action in your life, there's going to be frustration there. You can learn all you want forever. You've got to start doing. Next, something you can do, explore your creative side. Now, someone, Hartley, I want to say, was doing some art just recently. Some of you other guys are, are incredibly creative. So if you're already creative, do something else outside of you know, your standard operating procedure. Okay. Forrest is a DJ. There's creativity there. He's got to be creative on there. Maybe, you know, grab, grab a canvas and easel and go paint something. Get into photography. Guys, try and learn a new language. How many of you guys, when was the last time anyone tried to learn a brand new language? Now, I know some of you guys are on here and English is the second or third or fourth language, but allow your mind to expand. Invest in yourself a little bit. Try cooking some amazing recipe. Go get the, the most expensive ingredients. Come back home and just cook something super cool, right? Sit down and write something. Create a blog. Write a book. Some of you guys are authors. Do a little bit more. Now, number three, invest in yourself. Nurture your mind by reading, exploring other cultures, opening up your mind, looking at things that aren't the way that you think, and keeping your mind active. This, to me... Nurturing your mind and then nurturing your body. So nurturing your mind. Right now, you guys are here. And many of you are doing that. You're nurturing your mind by doing this. You're reading books. You are watching webinars. You're doing all this stuff. Here's a challenge. Go out 
and talk with someone that's outside of your circle of influence, your circle of friends, someone, whether it's a stranger, it's an acquaintance or somebody else, and just, just talk. Maybe someone's, they've got a different religion. They've got a different political point of view. They look at other things differently. We shelter ourselves too damn much. And then the, our social media algorithms do even more sheltering for us. Because you start liking certain posts and paying attention or even watching certain videos. You don't have to like videos inside that realm. You're just watching certain things. And Facebook and LinkedIn and Google, they're going to start putting more and more and more in front of you that are just like that. And you get into this bubble and you don't even realize it. And then everybody else that's outside of that bubble is some alien freak, weirdo, wacko, nut job. And why the hell can't they believe the same thing that you do? Because obviously it's this because this is the truth because, hey. Statistics shouldn't, you know, we can't modify statistics to make it show exactly what we want it to, can we? And yet we live in this bubble, right? And I fully understand the optics of a, you know, 41-year-old white dude that's, you know, I'm living okay and I'm comfortable in my condo and, and I understand that I don't see every single thing, right? But I try, you know, my, my children are not, you know, 100% Caucasian, right? I, I spent years in another country. I love, you know, I speak Spanish and Portuguese and I love every single culture because for crying out loud, it's just different. And I love different stuff. You know, I, I, I love life that isn't just, as much as I enjoy as an introvert, having things pretty, like I could eat the same meal almost every, you know, if you give me sushi and tacos and a couple of other things, I could eat that happily pretty much every single day. Right. If I never have to go out and hang out with other people, most of the time I'm okay with that too. I'm fine being like me and my fiance and the kids. And then occasionally a couple of friends, maybe like, I'm good with that, but man, don't you love walking into a, you know, eating at a restaurant with the type of food cuisine you've never had before walking into a, a country or a neighborhood where you, you look around and you go, this is so different, right? Whether it's, you know, Chinatown in New York or it's the favelas in Rio de Janeiro, or I'm looking to all sorts of different things when we get to Europe soon, as soon as this whole, you know, vaccine and travel and everything else is opened up enough, but damn guys, find some culture and some point of views that you don't think about normally. And I promise that will open things up in a big, big way. It'll help you too in your marketing, whether you want to believe it or not. So open your mind, keep your mind active. Next, nurture your body. It is absolutely a vehicle, guys. Give it high quality fuel. Once in a while, let that engine out, let it roar. I know some of you guys are, are uh, big on the bikes, right? You got some motorcycles. We got some riders in here. We got some people that like fast cars. You know, if you haven't ever done anything like that, getting on a, on a bike, I'm not big on that, but, um, you know, got to do the Porsche experience, have done some stuff like that. Getting in a fast car running like that is, man, that's amazing. Now, too many of us are rolling through life and, and you know, we're doing 33 and a 35. And that's all we want to do because it's slow and steady. You know, we start our, our right hand blinker half a mile from the turn. Right. And some of you are looking at me and shaking your head and saying, well, of course I am. Of course I put on my blinker, you know, 500 feet before I, I merge into a lane, because why wouldn't I? Guys, sometimes has anybody driven a race car, like a, a real race car? Has anybody driven some? No, you got nobody on here that has. Okay. So Go do the Porsche experience in Atlanta. And I think there's another one somewhere. Find somewhere to, do, you know, the, I don't know if the petty driving experience at Disney is anything like it, but find somewhere to do that. Now, I, I remember being in, in a, a vehicle one time that was, it, you know, in a Porsche. And like those engines are meant to run, right? To go fast. And when you're driving it like in first and second, the engine is, it feels like it's complaining, like it's crying. You know, like, just get me onto a highway and let me go. The motor's just screaming at you. A lot of you guys have been living your life that same way. You've been throttling back that engine, not letting it go. Now, if you need to see a doctor to make sure you're okay doing this stuff, then by all means, go see a doctor, right? 
disclaimer out, but go do something a little beyond what you think you're capable of. Get your heart beating to where you're just going, holy crap. I don't know if I can handle another couple of minutes of that. Patricia, some of our others, our, our health coaches, our fitness coaches, isn't it good once in a while push yourself a little beyond where you think? Re this weekend, we got uh, one of those VR headsets. It's in, called an Oculus. It's the program through Facebook. You get these VR games, right? It, amazing thing. I'm like freaking out over it. You get your wands and you're hitting and it's like in beat. You're doing squats. You're moving your arms around. I did this morning. I did like 12 minutes. The plan was to do 20. And I got to 12 and went, holy crap. Like I'm, I'm done. I'm done. My heart was like pounding. I go in to tell my fiance, I'm like, oh, can you barely talk? But you know, once in a while, just let that engine roar guys, let it out, do a little bit more, go for that long hike, go do something. Okay. So, uh, get regular maintenance though, get those checkups. I, I think everybody on this call is at the age where checkups should be a regular thing. Gentlemen, go get your prostate check ladies go get everything else checked i know you guys have been doing it for years it's mostly just us guys that don't pay attention to stuff but all of us should be in that position where we're taking care of things regularly okay and then polish up the exterior i'm looking at some of you gentlemen you could go grab a a, a cloth and do some polishing right now and make that nice and bright and shiny no no <laughs> sorry look Go get a new shirt, you know, get your nails done, get your hair done, you know, trim up that beard nice and tight, get some sun, add a little color to your life, do something, make the outside, polish it up, make it pretty, you know, celebrate life a little bit, go show off the new shoes, whatever it is. It's time to invest in yourself a little bit. Self-care doesn't have to be this great thing where, you know, it doesn't have to be the spa every week. Spa once in a while, sure, absolutely. The manicure and pedicure, a massage, facial, great, go. But it doesn't have to be just that, man. You know, it can be sitting down and reading a book for 10 minutes. It could be that walk that's just you. It could be a conversation with a friend and, and that recharge that you need. That is a version of self-care, right? Take care of yourselves, guys. Now, it, it goes beyond. There are the positive indulgences. Just don't look at them as indulgence. Look at it as investment in you. There are some indulgences, you know, a, a glass of wine every single night might be a little beyond just standard self-care. Pay attention to all of these little things because it all adds up. I know I got some of you mad at me just saying that, right? Once in a while, not a problem. Just take care of yourselves, guys. Yeah, Michelle's saying celebrate and invest in yourself. Guys, just do it. Go out. You are all spectacular. You are all amazing. Just celebrate you. Self-care is all about self-respect. Start respecting yourselves more and you will see a significant change in your life. Go out. Have an awesome day. I will see you guys tomorrow.